Should we talk about another company that doesn't overpromise and underdeliver, Steve? Perpetual let's do sandbagging it. company, Netflix. Yeah, so let's talk about Netflix, Steve. That's the last one that we need to cover today. Um, and I suppose we might as well come up with a full disclosure straight away, Steve. This is the one I have exited, and I will go through why towards the end. And uh, you guys, let us know what you think in the comments. But uh, revenue, Steve, came in at eight point two billion. That was plus six percent. If you're looking at FX neutral, it's about two point nine percent. Uh, if, if you consider the currency fluctuation, uh, net income was 1.5 billion, again up 3%, margin of 18%. That's about nine basis points uh, strengthening. <clears throat> Operating cash flow Steve came in at 1.4 billion, that's plus 1,298%, uh, margin of 18% plus uh, 1,630 basis points in terms of strengthening. And free cash flow Steve came in at 1.3 billion, that's a 10x. Uh, over last quarter, uh, last year, uh, same same quarter last year. Sorry, margin of sixteen percent, uh, one thousand six hundred nineteen basis points. Now that sounds great, Steve. I think wow, amazing. They, they've done so well. Uh, they spent a billion less on content, Steve. So you can sub that off your free cash flow and your operating cash flow, and it becomes a lot less impressive. Uh, in terms of business metrics, paid subs was two hundred thirty-eight million. That's about eight percent growth. Paid net ads was five point nine uh, million. This is. Uh, basically from paid sharing, um, moving on to new accounts. Uh, revenue was uh, plus 2.9, plus 6% FX neutral, obviously, and average revenue per uh, member was down 3% and actually down 1% FX neutral. In terms of geo splits, you can, Steve, is one of the regions they give. Do you know what you can is? It's US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, the strangest grouping of people I've uh, mm. I've ever seen. I thought it was US and Canada, and I thought, so well, why I would they give? First, yeah, yeah, why would they give so much uh, so much of Canada in the, in the name? But yeah, yeah, I did Google it just to double check. Uh, yeah, US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, revenue was three point six billion in this region. Uh, that was zero percent growth. Uh, net paid ads was plus one point two million. Paid subs seventy five point five million. Average revenue per user per member of $16 flat. Uh, EMEA, um, which is Europe, Middle East, and Africa, mm -hmm. revenue was $2.6 billion, down 3%. Net paid ads was plus $2.4 million. Paid subs, $79.8 million. Average re revenue per member of $10.87, so quite a bit, quite a bit less. Uh, Latin America, revenue $1.1 billion. Uh, that's minus 1% uh, decrease. Uh, net paid ads was plus 1.2 million, paid subs 42.4 million, average revenue per member of $8.58, and Asia Pacific was 919 million uh, revenue, minus 6%, net paid ads of 1.5 million, paid subs of 40.5 million, and average revenue per member of $7.66. So, not a lot of growth in those metrics, really, Steve. Uh, not, not particularly impressive, but I'll just quickly do the guide for you, Steve. So management's guide was paid net ads. Uh, they just said similar to 2Q2023. So we take that as adding about another 5.9 million users. They said uh, revenue would come in about 8.5 billion, which is about 7% growth. Uh, net income of 1.6 billion, which is about 13% up. Uh, margin, they reckon, would be about 19%. So revenue to growth to accelerate in the second half of 2023. They say this quite a lot, but they said specifically fourth quarter 2023 is when we should see revenue start to accelerate again. And they actually revised their free cash flow uh, projection from 3.5 billion up to 5 billion uh, for this full year. But again, that's from lower content spend, not actually generating something, which to me, Steve says they're not really fully understanding what Netflix's moat is. Netflix's moat is probably, in my eyes, that they buy all of the content and starve with all the others of content and they're willing to do it on a rather, rather consistent basis. Uh, here, they're, they've, they've dropped their content spend to just two and a half billion a quarter, uh, which is quite a significant fall. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, very interesting to see that. Uh, you mentioned the 1.3 billion uh, this quarter and then 5 billion for the year in free cash flow. And that looks like sort of, roughly 1.3 times 4 right so uh, you said it was on lower uh, content spend so don't get carried away with that idea they they think they're carrying on with this then in that case i wonder whether that i wonder whether that adds a double pressure then so on the one hand they're busy um uh, putting pressure on people shared uh, accounts and so on as well they ought to by the way um it, they ought to be able to get people to pay for their own accounts but also then taking the pressure off the uh, the kind of content flywheel um, is is making it, at the time you're causing people to actively think about paying for it 
um, rather than just kind of mindlessly running their subscription on because all of a sudden they can't do that. They need to buy their way in. You're going to start dialing back the content thing. Um, that to me looks like interesting timing on that particular version. Yeah, definitely does, doesn't it? It definitely does. So, I mean, I was looking at the valuation, Stephen. This is predominantly the reason why I I chose to exit it. So, it fell about 8% on the day, but it still left me up about 36%, I think it was. So, I was still up very healthily, even though I had about, I think it was about an 8 or 10% negative um, effects on it as well. So, I was probably up a, a, a lot more, really, but... Price to free cash flow, Steve, I was working out was about 72 before the earnings coming down to 49 if you factor in that artificial um, artificial increase. It'll be about 42 if my management hits this 5 billion mm-hmm. target. So it's, it's definitely not a cheap stock. So I ran it again for a reverse DCF to try and convince myself that the growth was achievable. And, and obviously it depends on your inputs, but I was just using standard inputs of a terminal growth rate of about 2% after 10 years, uh, a discount rate of 10, uh, and this would mean that you'd need about 17% free cash flow growth for the next 10 years to justify the valuation. Uh, it's evidently a lot more today at today's prices than what I paid for it, Steve, so that's why I took the cash on it. Uh, I thought this one was kind of like, uh, my whole idea on it basically was formed o- along that everybody was wrong when this price went down. Uh, they were wrong because uh, Netflix was not at the at the end of its growth path in terms of subscribers, and this wasn't like the the huge collapse in subscribers that people thought was just going to happen. And they had plenty up their sleeve to um to to you know basically get that share price back up via via growth. What they've done, Steve, is grow steadily, uh, but the share price has grown exponentially. And I thought that was a perfect time for me to uh, let somebody else be uh, uh, let somebody else play the great fool theory. And um, yeah, I'm sat sat with the money in a money market fund at the moment, Steve, just planning my next move. Interesting. We'll look forward to seeing what that is. I mean, that they said they're guiding for net ads in the region of six million uh, again, also in the next quarter. So you said same as previous one, just gone, which was I think five point nine couple of things there one is that that 5.9 is worth pointing out i suppose was miles higher than they people were expecting i thought i i don't have the number in front of me but i thought the number that was guided for began with a one uh point something for new ads for the quarter just gone uh and they appear to have absolutely knocked the cover off that one in ways that the market is not terribly impressed by with the stock going down that didn't seem to translate into much more in the way of kind of revenue and profit yeah, well, they, they did the same thing as they did last time because they've stopped actually rec- uh, reporting. Um, well, they said that they were stopped kind of guiding for paid. Ne- uh, paid that was ne- my ads. other part so of they, this. They, yeah, yeah, and they just say, "Oh, it'll be about the same as last quarter," which which was about a one point. I think one point six million ad. So we're right. expecting one point six. So to get okay. six was, uh, oh, nearly six million was a big a big change. Yeah, so that that was a big kind of push. It didn't really show up in the kind of top and bottom lines. Uh, we we were saying beforehand uh, a bit of FX help doesn't help um, there, but uh, it's it's interesting Netflix. I got the impression that you were buying at a time when uh, another video I saw on this said, "Look, not everything, uh, not a lot needs to go right for this here for this to move up off of these levels." And you don't have to think everyone is wrong about everything here. You only have to think there's a lot of uh, kind of bearish points, reasonable ones, and that their subscriber numbers were down, um, and that's not what people were expecting from Netflix by any means. Uh, they were wrong about Meta around the same time too, for the broadly the same reasons, if people thought everything was going wrong at the same time. Uh, and I did fine there, but I was out a bit quicker than you were from this one. It's interesting, Netflix. I, I also think it kind of comes up light on the free cash thing, which is why I'm not buying it but i'm interested to see that at least you having worked it out have the kind of courage of your uh convictions with these things when i saw brian Ferroli talking about tesla he appeared to say to my eyes and i may have heard him wrong here uh i would encourage people to check out his video he appeared to say something along the lines of look that's a very big number i think can they do it probably not but i'm gonna keep the stock anyway because i think it'll go up uh which to me sounds almost entirely like a way of saying yeah don't believe in this as an investment but reckon I can sell it to someone for something more. So that does sound a lot like greater full theory. However, uh, he has more money than I do. He's more successful than I am. He knows more about that stock and investing than I do. So um, I like. I, I think I like the idea that you're out of Netflix here, uh, Stephen. Interested in seeing where you go next. Maybe we'll come up with some ideas next week. Yeah, me too. I'm interested to see where I go next, Steve, because at the moment I don't have a clue. <laughs>